How's it going out there? This is Ryan from MyDividendGrowth.com with a tutorial on how you can download and use the Google Drive portfolio spreadsheet I use on my site for free. This spreadsheet automatically updates with the stock market and I've placed a link in the description of this video where you can download and edit it to make it your own. In this video, I'll be going over the formulas that I use in each cell and then some tips and tricks on general maintenance. A lot of this tutorial covers basic spreadsheet functions and it's tailored for beginner users. Once you initially have things set up, it's actually pretty easy to maintain. Upon downloading, you'll see two sheets to choose from. One sheet is set up to track a single investment account and the other has two accounts like the one I use on my site to track taxable and IRA accounts. You can delete whichever sheet you won't be using. Light blue cells are editable and orange cells will occasionally need adjustments. Let's start by deleting everything in the light blue cells. Then I'll begin renaming my sector information. The main thing to take away from the sector column is that you can merge and unmerge cells to account for the amount of tickers that belong in each sector. When the light blue area underneath the sector has been deleted, highlight it all and hit the merge button up top here to merge it all together. Then one more time, unmerge everything. Now you can start filling in the information. For example, let's say I want consumer goods to be the first. I'll type that in. And in case you don't know how to make the words fit into two lines, you simply press Alt and Enter on a PC or Option Enter on a Mac after the word consumer. Next, I'll determine how many tickers in that sector I own, and I can merge that many rows together to accommodate. So in this example, I have four consumer goods tickers to track, and I highlight these four rows, and I merge them together by using the merge button up top here. While that cell is highlighted, I'll use the borders button to the left of the merge button and select all borders to make this cell have a border around it. Let's do one more with consumer services where I'll have two more tickers to type in. I just input the name, highlight two rows, merge, and place the new borders. I can now fill in the rest of my sector information. Now it's time to input information into the remaining light blue editable cells. Input the tickers, number of shares, and cost basis accordingly you should see some of the information on the spreadsheet start to populate. Don't worry about anything else yet. As you buy and sell stocks over time, you'll need to make a few adjustments based on your total number of holdings. To remove rows, you can highlight those you want gone, right click on the row numbers, and select delete rows. To add rows, you click on the row above or below where you want to add, and either insert one above or below. Once you've inserted the rows, you'll notice all the information disappears. It's an easy fix to get this info to return. Just highlight a row above or below it that still has the formulas. We can grab this blue box in the corner of our highlighted row and drag the information to our newly created rows and all the information aside from the weight will be retained. Then just fill in the light blue cells again with your information. Now, while most of the time all the account totals at the bottom here will retain their information, if you add a row to the very top or bottom cell of an account, like I did on row E25 here, you'll need to adjust the formula and the totals to accommodate the changes. I do this by double-clicking the orange cells where it's calculating the sum of rows E4 through E24, and I just changed the 24 to a 25. You'll need to make adjustments to these totals occasionally, so if they ever seem off, this should be the first thing you check to see if things are adding up correctly. Now, overall weight is simply the value of each holding divided by the grand total. This is the one cell that will need editing every time you add or remove rows from the spreadsheet. Just make sure it references the portfolio total's value number, which is now on row G43. For instance, let's edit these rows that we added where no information is showing up. We see they were simply referencing the wrong cell. Annual income will need to be adjusted for however many dividend payments the ticker gives. Most businesses pay dividends four times a year and use the formula dividends per share times the number of dividend payments all times the number of shares owned. For my monthly paying dividend stock realty income, I changed the four in that formula to 12 for all 12 months that I'll get paid and now I see the correct total. For Disney, which pays a dividend twice a year, I changed the number to two the overall sector weight chart requires a fair share of editing. First, you'll want to make sure all of your sector changes you made in the first step are accurately represented. You can add and remove rows the same way in this area to make those changes. Write a note to yourself where the first sector cell of this area begins and last value cell ends. 
In this case, my information will start with the energy sector's value in cell L46 and end with technology in cell M53. Toggle on quick edit mode. Then I right click on the white area of the chart and select advanced edit. Select the tab on top here that says recommendations and replace these two cells with the info you just wrote down. Next, you'll need to change the formula in each value cell. This is just simple addition and you could easily just add all the cells together like equals G4 plus G5 plus G6. You can also use a slightly easier formula in which we're telling the cells to equal the sums of rows G4 through G6 plus row G30 of our second account. After adjusting these values, the chart will begin to populate. When finished, you can hit the eyeball here for viewing mode. And when you hover your mouse over the chart, you'll see all the information we just added. You'll want to make sure your account total lines are gathering the correct information. Make sure the cost, value, and income cells are taking totals from all of your holdings by double clicking to check. Adjust weight as needed like we did earlier so it references the grand total value of the portfolio. Then make sure the rest of the portfolio totals line uses the correct data. Cost, value, and annual income should add totals from both taxable and IRA accounts and look like this. Now I'll quickly go over the remaining columns we haven't touched and shouldn't ever need to edit while maintaining this sheet, just to make sure we understand why the formulas are being used. The price column uses a spreadsheet formula that collects live price information from Google Finance. By using this formula, we're telling the spreadsheet to display the price of the ticker listed in B4. In this basis per share column, we take the total cost basis and divide it by the number of shares to see how much our total cost basis per share is. Value lists the market value of each holding by taking the number of shares times the price and rounding to two digits. Percent and dollar amount changes are calculated by subtracting the total cost basis from the value and dividing by the cost basis. There are also two conditional formatting rules applied to these areas that will turn cells green if the final resulting number is above zero and red if the number is negative. The yield and dividends per share columns each use formulas to pull data from Google Finance and will automatically update. It refers to our ticker in B4 just like the price formula. Sometimes Google Finance doesn't recognize tickers and simply screws up like it did here for Eaton Corporation when I type it in with ETN. In this case, you have to manually input the dividends per share, which in this case is 55 cents, and just keep that updated. You can also manually add the yield or use this formula to calculate dividends per share times payments per year divided by the stock price. And that's pretty much it. One more time, I'll add a ticker because that's probably the most complicated part. Let's add Walmart to consumer services by first adding a row, highlighting a row above it that still has the formula information, dragging the little blue box to copy it all. Then I just input the info, change its weight, and make sure it's showing up in the overall sector weight chart. Good to go. You can download your spreadsheet by going to File, Download As. You can email collaborators and you can even publish to the web to send a link out or embed on your very own website like I've done at My Dividend Growth. Hopefully this tutorial answered all the obvious questions but feel free to comment below with any issues or other questions and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and happy investing.